If you had the Academy Awards night to do over again, would you do any of that differently? Well, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so, no. I felt that, um, that there was an opportunity for, since the American Indian hasn't been able to hear his voice heard, or have his voice heard, anywhere in the history of the United States, uh, I felt that it was a marvelous opportunity for an Indian to be able to voice his opinion to 85 million people. I guess that was the number. And uh, I felt that he had a right to, in view of what Hollywood has done to him. And uh, I was embarrassed for Shashin. She wasn't able to say what she intended to say. And uh, I was distressed that people should have booed and whistled and stomped, even though perhaps it was directed uh, at myself. They should have at least had the courtesy to listen to her. But uh, I think she did very well, and I was, uh, I, was, I was very glad that she did have what opportunity she, she had to, to say what she did. And, uh, uh, why didn't you get to read your entire, your entire statement as you planned it? Well, I think that they felt that it was inappropriate. And um, I, I actually don't know. I, I think they just, they didn't want her there. They didn't want the uh, evening interrupted with that particular note. And from their insular point of view, I felt that perhaps they they had a point. But uh, I don't think that people uh, generally realize what the motion picture industry has done to the American Indian. As a matter of fact, all ethnic groups, uh, all minorities, all non-whites. And uh, people just simply don't realize. They just took it for granted that that's the way the people are going to be presented. and these cliches were just going to be perpetuated. And uh, so when someone makes a protest of some kind and says, no, we do, please don't present the Chinese this way, or please, I mean, on this network every night, well, perhaps not every night, but you can see silly renditions of human behavior. Uh, the, uh, leering Filipino houseboy, or the wily Japanese, or the, the kook, or the gook, and uh, the idiot black man, and the stupid Indian. And it just goes on and on and on. And people actually don't realize how deeply uh, these people are injured by seeing themselves represented, not so much the adults, because they're already inured to that kind of pain and pressure. But uh, children, Indian children, seeing Indians represented as savage, as ugly, as nasty, vicious, treacherous, uh, drunken, uh, they grow up only with a negative in image of themselves. And it's, it, it lasts a lifetime. Did you Is that an answer the, to your question? Yeah. Did you, did you expect the uh, kind of outrage that you got from people, uh, I believe, uh, well, that very night, Raquel Welch made a joke against you, uh, saying, that, well, I hope the next person doesn't have a cause. Um, who's the Indian, uh, who's the uh, Western star uh, who followed later? Um, Steve McQueen. Uh, Steve, uh, Clint Eastwood, yes, of course. I, I very seldom make mistakes. Um, he uh, did his version of a joke, and then John Wayne looked like he was about ready to get a posse together. He looked, looked so silly. Uh, does that, did that surprise you, that they would be angered that you desecrated their cathedral? I, I wasn't surprised, no. Uh, there were a number of people that, that felt that 
Sashin had had uh, not been welcomed and not been treated properly, and and people that were sympathetic to what she was trying to say, and uh, I received an awful lot of mail in uh, support of that. Uh, the booing made me sore. Well, actually, I think the people were booing at me. Uh, they were booing because they thought, well, this is this moment is sacrosanct, and you're ruining our fantasy with the intrusion of a little reality. And I suppose it was uh, perhaps unkind of me and, uh, to do that, but uh, there was a larger issue, and it's an issue that nobody in the motion picture industry has ever addressed themselves to, unless forced to. I mean, the blacks have brought about changes because they were just damn angry about it. And they thumped the tub and threatened and made some noise about it. But if they had just been silent and thought, well, gradually wisdom will come to those who, uh, who are in the business of the movies and uh, they will do right by us. And, and the day would never have come. It, it, we, you know, have a lot to be grateful for that the blacks were as insistent as they were that the image of blacks were change, changing. But it's it's a a block by block fight. It's a uh, the f people are very timorous now about showing blacks in an unkindly light, um, and uh, but. They would go on with the Filipino houseboy or the uh, the Indian. I mean, you see it every day on television. Not every day. It was a World War II movie in which, uh, actually, it's John Wayne again. I don't mean to pick on him. Uh, in which he refers to Mr. Tojo's little yellow-bellied rats. Uh, and <sighs> there was so much racism in World War II movies. That you see, now. it's really really surprising. I mean, it was so crude that it's worse than you remember it. The thing that bugged me too was that people said, "There's Brando jumping on a." on a social cause bandwagon now, uh, getting in on the Indians, uh, forgetting that in the 50s you were, um, I think, one of the first people uh, fishing with the pile of Indians up in, on the West Coast. Uh, you must forgive me. We must take a message, and we'll be right back. Stay where you are. <laughs>